Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Father, that revelation knowledge shall flow freely today, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Father God, I pray less of me and more of you, none of me and all of you. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Exactly the things that you'd have me to say to these, your sheep. I thank you, Father, that you've anointed them with ears to hear, hearts to receive, and a spirit to contain your word. It's in the holy, mighty, all-knowing, all-powerful name of Jesus, the anointed one, and the power of his anointing that I pray. And let all that agree shout amen. amen. Shout amen again. Amen. Give God another shout. Amen. amen. Give your neighbor an elbow or a hug if they live with you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I was supposed to finish up on our sermon series um, talking about kingdom advancement, unity, community, and kingdom advancement. But, you know, as I started to talk about king, the kingdom advancement part, um, you know, anytime I talk about faith, the Holy Spirit has me teaching about advancement. The Holy Spirit has me teaching about whooping the enemy's butt. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit has me teaching on us winning. Amen. Say we're winners. Amen. Amen. I, get, I get excited. I really do. And, you know, it's funny. Last night I was studying uh, about the kingdom and, and what to teach on today. Because today I was really going to just talk about all the great promises of God. You know, because in the kingdom, man, God promises us great things. But, you know, I, I, I told God last, I'm like, Lord, but you know what? I talk about the promises all the time. But yet, now, now li listen to what pastor's going to say right now. It's not that I see y'all struggling to manifest the kingdom. I see you struggling to talk about the kingdom. To talk like the kingdom. You're never going to manifest the kingdom until you learn how to talk and think like the kingdom. Amen. It starts with us changing the way we view things, transforming the way that we see things. So the Holy, I was studying last night and the Holy Spirit said, son, they can't talk and think what they have not received. So then he began to take me to this scripture in, uh, in the word in Mark when he was in the mountain of transfiguration and he was getting ready to come down and he was getting prepared to go finish it. Say finish it. Finish. See, the, the problem with the body of Christ today is we become, um, I can't use that word. <laughs> We become soft. Jesus didn't go and try to win. Jesus didn't go and attempt to win. Jesus didn't go and give it his best effort. Jesus didn't go and, 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 and well, I'll try harder next time. Jesus went down and whooped the devils behind and took all authority, say all. all. Took all power, say all. He didn't ask for it. Excuse, excuse me, devil. I, I don't want to offend you, but I, I'm here to take back uh, the authority and the power that, uh, that you took. Would you mind going inside and getting that for me? No, that's not what he did. I'm sorry. The Bible says word for word that the kingdom was taken by violence. Amen. Amen. Now, we learned. We don't do what these knuckleheads did at the Capitol a couple of months ago or weeks or whatever it was. We, we ain't going and tearing stuff up. We're not doing what the rioters did a couple of months before that. We're not going to go tear and burn cities down. That's not what I'm talking about when I say taking the kingdom by violence. Right. 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 Knuckleheads on the left and knuckleheads on the right. Yeah. I'm talking about us operating. If you want to know who we need to be emulating, somebody like Dr. King who believed the word of God, who stood for the word of God, who transformed the word by the word, the world by the word of God. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. 
He exchanged worldviews of hatred, division, racism, and inequality with God's views, not our views. See, today the church wants to, the, the church wants to follow an athlete or an entertainer before they follow the word of God. Just because somebody can catch a football and tell a joke don't mean they have character and integrity. A pastor, but there's a lot of preachers in the church don't have character and integrity. That's on you, not on them. You need to learn how to know who to follow. That's what's wrong with some of you. Y'all follow everybody, and y'all follow anybody. And then you want to know why you get led in the ditch. Amen. God has called us to advance the kingdom. But before we can advance the kingdom, before we can do what God has called us to do, we have to receive the kingdom. Amen. And the issue in the church today is we don't, we are not receiving, say receiving, receiving. the kingdom. So we're going to talk about this today. And it was so awesome, man. Like I said, I was, I was listening to my pastor this morning and she was just, man, it, it, it's like, you don't know how good it is when God confirms things to you. Do your gifts. Amen. See, some of y'all still come to church just to come to church. You need to be here today wanting something confirmed that God has said to you. Right. You need to have come here today praying Proverbs 3. Lord, I'm not going to lean into my own understanding. I'm believing what you're saying, but I want you to confirm it. The Bible says that every word of God be confirmed by two or three witnesses. But we're in a hurry today to have anything confirmed. I'd rather take 10 years to be on the right path than to take one year to be getting on and off the path. Don't you know that causes doubt and unbelief? Yes, sir. The power of failure is doubt. That's the power of failure. Failure has power based on how you see failure. I never see failure as failure. I only see it as an opportunity to practice and perfect my performance. I never see failure as failure. I only see it as opportunity to enhance my, my, my uh, uh, a sense of humor. I'm not judged by the number of times I fa fa uh, succeed, but by the number of times I fail. And the number of times I fail is in direct proportion to the number of times I can. The number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep trying. Failure ain't the issue. Quitting is the issue. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, good, ain't it, Teresa? Failing ain't the issue. Quitting is the issue. That's why they hate Tom Brady. He ain't quitting. 43 years old. They're already trying to crown Patrick Mahomes. See, he just said, Patrick Mahomes could get hit, hit tomorrow and his career as you know it is over. Hey Amen. He ain't nothing promised to you. There's nothing like longevity. God's called us to win for a long time. Amen. To the age of time. You know what that is? Say forever and forever and forever. forever, forever. And when we get done winning on this earth, we're going to die and go win in heaven. Amen. 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 God has called us to do great and mighty things. Amen. Amen. So today we want to look at this. How do, we, how do we receive the kingdom? How do we, how do, what is the, say the how to. The how -to. That's what we're going to look at today. Now you can make a decision today. Today, you're going to have to make a decision. Do I want to receive the kingdom or do I want to continue to receive what I've been receiving? And just in case you didn't know, this red tie, this red tie in this pewter suit, let me just take a, let me just take a commercial break. <laughs> this is a pewter suit. This is a red tie and this is a white shirt. Those are the colors of the next Super Bowl champs. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hallelujah. And let me go ahead and tell y'all right now while I'm here in the pulpit. It ain't even going to be close today. Hallelujah. Okay. I just had to. I, I just had to get that out. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to get back in the word now. Go to Mark. I just had to, I had to say that while I was up here. Hallelujah. I had to, I had to give my haters. A public service announcement. <laughs> I had to stop last night. I had, I had a pastor really coming at me kind of hard. and I said, you know what? 
I'm going to just leave that alone because we were starting to get a little fleshy. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to grow up. That's one area that, you know. He started to say something that affected me succumbing to, to, to bullies. I said, but brother, I ain't never succumbed to no bully. As a matter of fact, get around me and I'll bully you a little bit and we'll see what you succumb to. I said, I started to, I started, my mind started to go back a little bit. I'm like, no, nah, can't let my mind go back. Amen. I used to knock bullies out with both hands. Amen. A bully. I can't even counsel kids that have been bullied. Amen. I only have one kind of counsel for them. You hit the bully in the mouth, he won't bully you no more. Amen. That's what we're going to do to, that's what we're going to, do to Satan today. You know, you know the devil's a bully. The problem with some of y'all is y'all still letting them poke you in the chest. Every time you, you talk, you know that you realize in the church, we talk more about the devil than we do about Jesus. We talk more about what the devil is doing to us than what Jesus did for us. Let me say it again. We talk more in the church about what the devil is doing to us than what Jesus did for us. And how many of you know what Jesus did for us will never be trumped by what the devil is trying to do to us? Listen, folks, the devil has no authority. He has no power. He has no jurisdiction in your life. Nowhere. But pastor, he's there. Stop saying he's there. He's not there. You're allowing him to be there because you continue to acknowledge him. Stop acknowledging that fool. Amen. Yeah, but, 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 that's the problem. Get your butt out of the way. Your butt is in the way. Amen. Amen. It's the butt that's keeping you in doubt. It's the butt that's not allowing you to receive. It's the butt that's not allowing you to walk in what God has called you to walk in. But pastor, it don't look like wealth and riches there in my house because you keep talking about what it looks like. Amen. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Amen. And if you make a decision to talk more about what it is and what Jesus has created it to be Hallelujah. versus what the devil's trying to prove to you it is, yeah. one day, say one day. One day. Oh, yeah, you're going to walk in it. See, see, the kingdom of God, see, and this is the problem, and this is why you hear the church today, why do you think the church is teaching so much on miracles? Because you don't have no faith preachers no more. Amen. The faith preachers are dying. So once faith dies out, now all you can do is hope and believe for miracles. God didn't call me to live my life based on miracles. I'm sorry. Jesus died for me to live my life by faith. Nothing wrong with a miracle. We all need a miracle every now and then. Amen. Pastor's not talking against miracles. Pastor's not saying you can't believe for a miracle. Pastor's not saying, God, don't do miracles. I got to say all these things. Because yeah, but Pastor Nick said miracles ain't. No, it's not what Pastor Nick said. Amen. But a miracle is intervention in the natural order of God. And God don't need to do that. He's given us his word. He's given us his spirit. And he's given us the power of faith to live our life by. Amen? Amen? So, Pastor, why are we here? I'm glad you asked. I have an answer. Go to Mark chapter, let's start in Mark chapter 10, and let's start in verse, Let's start in chapter 13. Chapter 13, Mark, chapter 10, verse 13. It says, and they brought a young child to him. Jesus loved children. Amen. I was telling Miss Aaron earlier, the lyric came up to me. He got scratched by a cat, and he came up to me. As soon as he see me, pastor, pastor, pray for my, pray for my finger. 
And I remember one time a, a little kid did this. This was a, several years ago. And one of the ushers was like, God, leave, leave, leave Pastor alone. He, no, 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 don't do that. Nothing greater than a young man. It may look, it may, it, it, it may not even have been a big deal, but it was a big deal to him. And he knew if he had fear or if there was something he was worried about, he just needed to get a prayer, a touch, agreement, and everything's going to be okay. And I prayed for him. When I got done, he looked up at me, and that little cute little smile just came on his face, and he went away. He came innocent. He came broken. He came for help. He came with no pride. He came not knowing. Oh, oh, we're going to get into it right here. See, some of you can't receive the kingdom because you know too much. Amen. Some of you can't receive the kingdom because you're too educated. Amen. Some of you can't receive the kingdom because you're too good. Some of you can't receive the kingdom because you're too talented. Amen. Some of you can't receive the kingdom because you just know more than everybody else. Amen. You know more than me. You know more than my wife. You know more than leadership. You know more than Jesus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove it to you. I'm going to show it to you in the scripture. Now, remember, when I'm reading this, Jesus ain't talking to church folks. He's talking to his disciples, his leaders, the proven ones. Notice I. Wasn't one, one, one of them with him, but, but John, I think, at the cross. Tough Peter punked out. They all punked out. But they were the proven ones. What does it tell me? It tells me we got a lot of work to do. If, if the enemy got the disciples to punk out, don't you know the enemy's going to try to get you to punk out? You know, y'all idolize the disciples so much. I got my St. Peter crucifix on. It's going to protect me. I got my St. Jude candle lit and everything as well. I think about the stuff that, that, that God showed me when I was a little boy, young boy. I remember coming home one day. I was about 14 years old on Cass and Matanzas, and we had a front porch porch you walk up on the house and man the porch had all you know my mom was 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 mixed up with a bunch of cubans and puerto ricans and latin folks oh had candles all over the front porch i pull up my mom i'm like what eh, eh, don't get out huh, what what mom what's wrong eh, it's a blue idea they, they're, they're cursing man i got out of that car 14 years old chris kicked all the candles off if it stood right there, if a broadia is real, let it come right now. Let it come right now. My mom looked at me. I'm kicking the candles off. Fourteen years old. Come on, man. But that's how some of us do. We give Satan so much authority. We give him so much jurisdiction in our mind. So much territory. He can't hurt you. He can't harm you. He can't affect you. He's got nothing for you. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. As long as you make a decision to stay in the kingdom. Now, when you get outside the kingdom, it's a different story. I remember the movie Warriors. How many of y'all ever seen the movie Warriors? Warriors, come out and play. Y'all remember that? Remember what them boys said? They were in the Bronx. If we could just get back to Coney Island, because when we see the water, we know we're home. We know we're safe. Some of y'all hanging out in the Bronx too much. And you need to get back to Coney Island. Amen. Y'all understand? Ain't nothing but trouble in the Bronx. That's why Pastor Dollar opened up a church in the Bronx, baby. Pastor Dollar went to the Bronx. Amen. I'm just using a metaphor. I ain't got nothing against the Bronx. I'm just telling you. I'm, what, what I'm trying to tell you is some of us allow the enemy to take our mind out of the kingdom. It's the way we think. 
We allow the enemy to take our thinking from kingdom thinking to natural flesh worldly thinking. So he says here in Mark chapter 10, right? In verse 13, he says, and they brought a young child to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought him. See that? They were the disciples doing it right there. But when Jesus saw it, he was very much displeased. See, leaders, don't get mad when I, when I look a little displeased. Jesus looked a little displeased sometimes, too. Oh boy. My wife's always telling me, Pastor, you got to be nicer to the people. I'm sorry, man. I got kingdom business to do. It says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For as such, talking about the little kingdom, the little children, is the kingdom of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom as a little child. He's talking to the disciples. They're grown. They know the word. They've been Christians. They've been walking with Jesus. And he's telling them, you've not received it correctly. As a child, he shall not enter therein. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit told me. They can't operate with kingdom power when they refuse to receive it the kingdom way. He says, and he took them up by their arms and he put his hands on them and he blessed them. And when he had gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled at him and asked him, good master, what shall I do? And then he goes on to talk about uh, the rich young ruler. And it's, it's kind of interesting because they watch the, the, Elizabeth is texting me. She know, you know, I'm in church. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> um, but now they talk about the rich young ruler. And, and in this story, they, that rich young ruler couldn't even give. That's all Christ was telling him. And as a result of that, he was never mentioned again in the Bible. And he did everything else. Why? Because money's an elementary thing. And he couldn't even understand that God, money without God isn't worth having. Amen? So we see here in Mark chapter 10 to 16, I just read you, this was Jesus. If, if you, you keep reading in, in 9, him coming down, him having a conversation with his disciples. And, and what he's telling them, the first thing that we notice is that Jesus talks about the kingdom of God as we have to receive it as a little child. We have to get into that position. Our making the kingdom happen on earth is what's important. Why? Because this child came to Jesus and needed healing. But the disciples didn't have the right frame of thought. Amen? In Matthew chapter 24, go there. Watch this. We got to receive it like a child. Like a child. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to lay a little foundation. We're going to come back to that. Say, receive it like a child. Yeah, we got to understand that. Matthew chapter 24, look at this. Y'all all right? I'm not going to go long today. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Is it warm in here or is it me? It's warm? All right. Can we turn the air on? Matthew chapter, did we pay the bill? Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. In verse, verse 14, read it with me. It says, ready, read. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then what? We've been called to preach the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Say God's way of being. God's way of, being. God's way of thinking. God's way of overcoming, God's way of prospering, God's way of handling business, God's way of handling marriage, God's way of handling family, God's way of handling jealousy, God's way of handling hate, God's way of handling racism. The kingdom of God is simply God's way.
I watched the thing last night, the other night. I'm watching it. He got these folks on, you know, these po polit politician folks, right? So the, so the guy on the right is talking to the girl on the left. And the girl on the left, you know, he says, well, listen, you know, we need to do this. We need to. And, you know, hey, man, we just need to come together. The girl on the left says, oh, no, 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 no. Y'all didn't want to come together when, when y'all were in power. Now y'all want to come together. Ain't no coming together. See what I mean? See what I mean? That, why? Because they're not kingdom people. They're politicians. We ain't never coming together. That's what they said. But you know what? We don't need them to come together. We're coming together. The church is coming together. We're bringing unity to the community. Why? Because we don't see ourselves as black or white. We don't see ourselves as Republican or Democrat. We see ourselves as God carriers and kingdom enforcers. Amen? Amen. So what is the power when you take the battle to the devil? See, in the world, taking the battle to the devil looks like what you've seen, you know, in all the riots. No matter was it the right or the left, all of them. That's the world's way of taking See, they go, they go up. That's not God's way. God's way is us holding hands and praying together and marching together and allowing freedom and allowing love and liberty to, to, to prevail and not changing the way that we think. Meaning what? That God's kingdom is first in all things. Amen. And if it's not edifying and it's not perfecting and it's not building the kingdom of God, I'll have no part of it. No part of it. I don't care what it is. God is pleased to use his people to grow and advance the kingdom. That's the thing we got to see right there. Mark, uh, Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. It is God's desire. Now, here's, here's, where, here's where we got to get to to this part. The church and the purpose of the church. See, see and this is, this is when we talk about the kid thing, becoming a kid to receive the kingdom. The purpose of the church, and, and hear me when I say this, the purpose of the church ultimately is not for getting people saved. Let me give you an example. How many people in here have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Raise your hand. All right, put down your hands. How many people in here have never prayed the sinner's prayer, never received Christ? For those of you on video, there's not one person in the sanctuary raising their hand. So what is, what is the opportunity for the Holy Spirit today to get somebody saved? None. Why? Because everybody in here is what? Saved. saved. So the purpose of this meeting, this service today, is not to get folks saved. You know when you get folks saved? When you're on your job. You know when you get folks saved? When you're at your Christmas party. When you're at your family gathering. And you know how you get them saved? Well, Pastor, I don't want to be taking my, my Bible out at the job. You don't need your Bible at the job. You don't need your Bible at the job. You don't need to, to banter what you are. Demonstrate what you are. But see, the problem is the church isn't doing what it's called to do, which is training people up. And I used to blame the church and the pastors. But you know, I'm starting to see people don't want to be trained up. Because they're already trained up. What's funny is they're trained up, but they're losing. Right. See, so you know when I know I needed to train more? When I lost. Because, see, if you lose and you know you need to, to go back to the drawing board, that's a sign of humility. But when you are losing in life and you think you have all the answers, that is a sign of pride. And the Bible says pride comes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a great fall. So we as a church have to understand that God has given the church, the Bible says the fivefold ministry. Let, let, me, let me show it to you. Turn in your Bibles to the book of, um, where did I write that out? Mm, I know I wrote it down. Uh, well, let me just stay on my message, and I probably will get to it because I know I wrote it down. Go to John chapter 3 and verse 16. So we're talking about taking the, 
the gospel to the utter ends of the world. And what does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that what? He gave his only begotten son so that whosoever what? Believed shall not perish but shall have what? Everlasting life. So we see that in order to walk in the kingdom, we have to believe. We have to believe. believe we have to be believers. Our faith is not something we work for. Watch this. We build, it's not something we build up. Faith comes by trusting and relying on God. So the thing that we're building is our trust and our reliance on God by renewing our mind from a world's mindset to a kingdom mindset. It all comes by renewing our mind. In Mark chapter 10, verse 15, it says it this way. Jesus used the example of a child to illustrate his point. He says to receive the kingdom, we must be what? Childlike. Christians, watch this, Christ wants us totally dependent on him to be able to operate in the kingdom to be able to operate in the kingdom. When we think about kingdom advancement and we think about children and we think about what Christ was saying to become childlike, when you're a child, what are you? What do you think a child is? Say this with me. Say a child is dependent. Right? What? Totally. Totally dependent. James has not thought one day, has not spent one hour of his existence wondering how am I going to pay the rent? Not one day. Not one day. He's not spent one hour thinking about where am I going to go buy food at today and where am I going to get the money to buy it? Not, not one time. Not one time. Now he's getting a little bit older, so he might be to a point where he's starting to think about it. Why? Because he's got a mother that's taking care of him. That's what a child does. So no matter how old we are, no matter how self-sufficient we are, we see that in order to operate in the kingdom, we have to put down our way of thinking, our way of being, the way we see it. And we got to surrender it all to the way that God sees it. We, and this process is a process of evolving. What does the word evolve mean? Children are always maturing, evolving, and transforming. Children are always evolving, maturing, and what? Transforming. The word evolve means to, watch this, watch this. The word evolve means to develop gradually. Watch this. Especially from a simple to a more complex form. Let me say it again. I'm going to add some words in. Check this out, Brenda. From a simple, say simple, say child. More complex, say complex, say adult. Four. So God is trying to develop us from a simple to complex form. The challenge is we're always holding on to the flesh. We're always holding on to the world's way of seeing things. Our emo exactly our emotions. Flesh is defined, listen. Sense and reason without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Your flesh is sense and reason. When you, when you sensibly come up with a business and you reason your way into doing it without consulting the word, without consulting God, without consulting spiritual authority in your life, without consulting your heavenly father. You just decide, I don't care how old, Pastor, but I saved this money. I worked for this money. I don't have to talk to nobody. You, you get ready to fall. That's not kingdom thinking. Kingdom thinking says what? Say with me. There is, there is. Wisdom, wisdom in a multitude of counselors. 
I had a young man in my church. He, he's believing God for his business to grow mightily. And, and, and he sowed his first fruits, him and his wife today. And, and what did the Lord have me pray? Did Lord give them wisdom? What, listen, folks, let me give you the definition of wisdom. Wisdom is direction that God gives you that money can't buy. Amen. Wisdom is direction that God gives you that money can't buy. And it will create wealth that you don't even know how to believe for. That's what wisdom is. You cannot convince me that I am smart enough, intelligent enough, charismatic enough, or good enough to do what God's done in my life over the last 20 years. If I could have sat down 20 years ago at Paytech Communications with John Ferrandes at lunch and wrote out what God has done in my life since he's gotten to know me in, in ministry and in the world, he would have laughed me out of the building. Right, John? <laughs> Still laughing. Because <laughs> it, it's crazy. You can't write it out. Why? Because I didn't do it. God did it. My intelligence didn't do it. God's wisdom did it. Do you understand that? Listen, folks. God wants to give you undeniable, unrefutable evidence that it's him. Amen? Amen? That's why the Bible says he wants to do more than you could think, ask, or imagine. Yes. God loves you. Yes. God wants, especially y'all that are faithful, committed, yes. sold out. You got, to, you got to raise your believer. Amen. Watch this. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Let me show it to you in the Word. So that way you don't think I'm just talking. Galatians chapter 5. Sometimes God has it coming out so good that it just sounds like it, it ain't me. It's God. I promise you. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, it says this. But if you, Galatians 5 verse 16. It says, this I say, when we walk in the spirit, say the kingdom, kingdom. you and you shall not fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. So the way we walk in the kingdom, uh, the way we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh is we walk in the kingdom. The way we don't adhere to what our natural mind is saying, go and see what God has said about it. Watch what he says here. Verse 17. For the flesh lusts after the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Do you see that? Watch what it says in verse 18. But if you be led by the spirit, you are not what? Under the law, the do's and the don'ts. God's not interested in the do's and the don'ts. That's why some of y'all can't do anything. Because you, you're corralled by the do's and the don'ts. You're corralled by the law. Now, I would do that, Pastor, but you know I still smoke cigarettes. And God is not happy with my sin life. Stop focusing on stopping. Stop focusing on the cigarettes. And start focusing on what God's told you to do. And one day you'll get a revelation from God that he wants you here a much longer time. So you need to stop and you will stop. Amen. Not through your self-effort, but through the power of the living God. Amen. Amen. I stopped playing golf. You know why I stopped playing golf? Takes up too much time. Takes me four hours to play. Then I got to come home and soak in the tub for another hour. <laughs> After I get done soaking in the tub, I got to go take a nap for five hours. <laughs> After I take a nap for five hours, the next day I got to get up and uh, I barely can move. Man, pop all that. I got kingdom business to do. I got time for all that. Chase a little white ball around. Come on, man. Now, if y'all are golfers, look, do, do what you do. I'm just telling you what God told me. 
That, that ain't done. Pastor said we need to stop playing. See, Pastor, that was a word of the Lord. That's how I hear some of the wives. That was a Lord word of the Lord for you. You need to stop playing golf and spend more time with me. No, that's not what God said. <laughs> I'm not here. Bro. I started to say something. <laughs> See, got to mind my tongue. Verse 19. It says, now the works of the flesh, watch this, are manifested, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, all these things, right? So we see down in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Say love, joy, and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness, right? Faith, meekness, temperance. And it says, against these, there are no law. So what he's telling us is when we start operating in the kingdom, we make a decision to become like a child and allow ourselves to become developed. Amen. In what? Say in love, in, love. in joy, in, joy. In, peace. in peace. That's where we start. We start that on the inside. That's God on the inside. He's working on our love walk, right? Yeah. And, and when we start operating in love, now we start having joy. When you start having the joy of the Lord on the inside, guess what happens? You start having peace, right? Say, that's in us. And then, right, on us or, or through us, people start seeing the long-suffering, the gentleness, and the goodness. That's on us. And then what starts flowing through us? Faith, right? Meekness and temperance. See, people want some people to be temperate, they have temperance, but they don't have love. See the development? You get all out of order, and that's the purpose of the kingdom. We have to become like children. We have to learn that we cannot chase after our emotions. We cannot, in the kingdom, you cannot do what you want to do because you're grown enough to do it. Y'all understand that? I'm grown enough to do anything I want to do. And watch this. Not only am I grown enough to do whatever I want to do, I got the money to do whatever I want to do. How about that? Huh? I don't have to go to the Motel 6 no more. I can go to the Ritz Carlton now. Amen. That's why some of y'all are still broke. Because God knows money is an amplifier. When you're a drunk and you're broke, you drink Mad Dog 2020. How many of my Mad Dog people I got in here? Amen. Y'all remember? 239 at the Circle K. When you wanted to get lit, right? But when you get some money... You don't drink Mad Dog no more. Now you drink Cristal and Dom Perignon and Hennessy and all that nonsense. I was thinking today, well, actually yesterday, is there anything, y'all help me now, is there anything more sad than a 30, 40, or 50-year-old in the club? I mean, I just don't get it. In the club, 30 years old, you're in the club. I, I, I can't understand it. What is in the club at 40 and 30 and 50 years old, baby? You need to be in life, not in the club. Amen? You ain't going to find nothing. Look, pastor's talking to you. You ain't going to find nothing in the club. If a dude is in the club at 40, he's broke. Let me help you. Either that or there's something mentally wrong with him. Trust me, you don't want them problems. Amen? Amen? But why do we do that? We're always ch chasing our flesh. We can't, we can't mature. We're, we're trying to seek that younger time in the wrong place. You need to be seeking that younger time and that younger place in the Word. Amen. Allowing yourself to become like a child, to learn the Word and learn about the kingdom so that now you can become an overcomer. And you know what? Most people, why they can't get there is they fight development. Mm -hmm. Write this down. The Holy Spirit gave this to me this morning. When you fight development, kingdom development, you are fighting against the kingdom. How you feel, your emotion, and flesh, your flesh, will create worldly thinking, not kingdom believing. When you operate and chase after how you feel, the world, worldly thinking, your flesh, and not kingdom thinking, 
it will hurt your believing. You will never be able to believe like the kingdom. You'll never be able to believe like the kingdom. We have to understand now more than ever, there is a time right now that the, that the church has to rise up. And we have to make a decision that we are going to operate our lives based on the kingdom so the world can see it. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Let me show it to you. Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I, I got to tell you, anytime you preach this, it, 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 you literally can feel the pull. I'm talking about the other way, not, the, not, not towards the kingdom. You literally can feel. People don't want to give up their world. They really don't. People really don't want to surrender to Christ. They don't. No, they like the club. No, they do. They, they like all that stuff they're doing. All the stuff they're doing, they know it's not kingdom, kingdom business. They like it. Always about them, their business, what can they be doing. And, and not, not having a business so you make more money for your family. There, there really wouldn't be anything wrong with that. Having a business so you make more money for the kingdom. Having a business simply because they're so insecure that they need to be noticed. I had a friend of mine, man, on his marketing agency, man, came up with a great, a great thing, man, took off for him. He started creating branding for people. You know what you call it? Get noticed. Man, it went off the chain because that's all people want to do. They want to be, they don't even care if they make any money. You know how many people have businesses just so they can put CEO on a card? They could care less if they make any money. They just want to hand that card out and say, I'm the CEO of. CEO of what? CEO of what? Yeah, one employee, you're the CEO. You're the chief executive of one employee. Ephesians chapter 4. Maybe y'all are getting it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse, I'm going to start in verse 11. I want to read this in the Amplified, that's okay. No, actually, I'm going to read in the King James for you. Oh, this is what I was looking for earlier. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, watch this. And he gave some apostles, and he gave some prophets, and he gave some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Watch this. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body. Watch this. Till we come into unity of the faith, Say the kingdom. the kingdom. And knowledge of the Son of Man, or the Son of God, under the perfect man, under the measure of, and the statue of the fullness of God. You see that? Verse 14, that, that we henceforth, watch this, be no more what? Children. Children. Now, how do you, now he's going to, now he's going to describe something. Now, I want everybody to lower their offense guard. And I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. And the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you where you're at. Now, remember what I taught you all about how you tell where you're at from a wealth perspective? Everybody know how to tell where they're at? We got the very poor, the poor, the middle class, the rich, and the wealthy, right? Right? The very poor lives what? Day to day. The poor lives what? Week to, the, 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 the middle class lives what? The rich live what? The wealthy live what? And if you find yourself on this chart, it doesn't matter why, because you found yourself. And once you know where you're at, now you can what? Get on to where God wants you. So what I'm about to read you is another chart, so you spiritually know where you're at. So just because you've been in the church for 30 years, don't mean that you're growing up in the Word. Amen? So don't get offended with God, because he's about to tell you where you're at. Watch. He says right here, ah, don't get offended. Don't, don't get offended. Verse 13, till we all come into unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God under the perfect man, under the measure and the stature of Christ, that we hence be no more children tossed 
to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, by the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and they wait to deceive. But speaking truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Do you see that? So the way you know where you're at, are you always questioning God? Are you always going back and forth? Does God mean this? Does God mean that? And, and how you go and how you develop, when there's something that challenges you, listen to pastor, when there's something that challenges you in the word, get in there and get it settled. And make sure it's settled the right way. Make sure you understand exactly what God's saying and move on. Don't allow the enemy to, the enemy wants to challenge you in the word. Do you know how many times I've taught on abundance? Watch this. I'm going to give you an example. Right here in this church. Watch this. How many people believe, and don't, don't tell me what I want to hear, tell me what you really believe. How many people in here really believe that God wants us to live a life of abundance? How many people believe that? Okay. But there is a limit to it. I mean, he wants us to live in abundance, but does he really want us to have golden toilets and, and cars with gold rims and, and, you know, shirts made out of pure gold? I mean, I mean, there is a limit to it. How many of us believe that? See? See? And there's not. The, the word says there's not. But you can't believe that. Because to you in your mind, is well, that's wasteful. But let me ask you a question. If a guy has gold rims on his car, because that was his desire, and because that was his desire, God made him a billionaire. And he's given 500 million of his billion, half of it, to finance the kingdom. Is there really anything wrong with him having gold rims? I don't think so. Why? Because everything about God is directional. Because he said he's, because he, he's, here's the thing, God's called us to be kings and priests. Have you ever read about King Solomon? Homeboy had a lot of money. You could take Bayo, Bezo, is that his name? Bozo, Bezo. You could take Bezo. You could take Buffett. You could take Zuckerberg. You could take all of them together, and they don't have the net worth of King Solomon. Amen. But yet we think they're rich. Man, they ain't got it. They don't have a clue what rich is. Amen. Amen. King David, I think, was richer than Bo Bozo. I mean, Bezo. Amen. Amen. What are you saying? God has no problem giving you money as long as it's money with a mission. Amen. What is your mission? What are you believing God for? Now, that's just one example. That's just one example. The other, there's many examples. We all come to the, we all have these limits in our mind. Mm -hmm. And all we got to understand is the kingdom of God doesn't have any limits. Amen. The kingdom of God don't. Because if you could take all that money and be a blessing, the Bible says we're blessed to be a blessing till what? All. We're blessed to be a blessing till what? All we're blessed to be a blessing till what? All the families of now let's say it real loud. We're blessed to be a blessing till what? All the families of I don't know about you, but I don't, see, I don't see all the families of the United States blessed yet. So how, how, how can there be a limit with you having too much? There's only a limit with you having too much when with what you want becomes more important than the kingdom. But as long as you're willing to do what God tells you to do, when God tells you to do it, how God tells you to do it, you don't have a problem with anything you want. Because here's the truth. You want me to tell you the truth? When you truly have a desire to do the kingdom of God, you ain't going to want no gold realms. You're just not going to want it. 
My pastor didn't have a, we didn't have a private jet because we wanted to fly around in a private jet. We, have a, we had a private jet because we had 180 speaking engagements a year, and a lot of them were late at night and in different places where you couldn't get in and out of. And at the end of the day, what a lot of people didn't know, we didn't even pay for the jet. It was given to us. But see, y'all want to jump out. Preacher don't need no private jet. Why not? Let me ask y'all a question. Do I need a microphone? It's a tool to do business. Somebody told one that Pastor, when you gonna believe God for a private jet? I, I'm not speaking anywhere. What do I need a jet for? I, you know what I need? I need a good microphone. Be relative. Don't don't do something because you think it's something that looks cool. Everything we have y'all ever noticed something about this church? Everything we need, we what? We have it. We needed fifteen thousand dollars worth of lights because we're going on TV. The minute we needed it, what happened? We got the lights. Everything we need, we have. Everything we need. And listen to this: we don't owe no man nothing but the love of. Amen. About to end 2020. Is it 2021? In 2021, we will pay this building off. Asset worth over $1 million. Amen. Don't owe nobody nothing. Don't owe nobody. In the middle of the pandemic, our ministry grew 234%. Write that down, devil. Amen. You cannot mess with what God has blessed. But why? Because we have kingdom business on our mind. We are doing our part. But pastor, I I don't see, you know, the other church down the street fed 500 people last week. Good. That's what God called them to do. And guess what? We feed people too. We don't feed them. We don't feed them the way you want us to feed them. We take ministries that God has anointed to feed people and we sow into them. We don't have to do everything. See, y'all have to do everything because you're interested in your name being on something, not what God is doing. I don't need my name on everything. I need my name on the things God has told me to put my name on. And the things God hasn't told me to put my name on, we need to support if God told us to support it. And watch this. If God didn't tell us to support it, guess what? No matter how many children they're feeding, we ain't going to support it. Amen? Amen. Why? Because of the vision God has given us in the season God has given us in the timing that God has given us. Amen. 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 I have I have a lot of heart for them poor kids in Africa and all over the world that are hungry. But guess what? I got a heart for the kids right here in Pine Castle that are hungry, too. Yeah, yeah Pastor, you know, them, they, them parents know better. They live. They, they, no, no. They may know all that, but them kids are still suffering. I'm concerned about the children. See, the problem is everybody wants to affect the world and they're not affecting their community. It starts with community. Preachers want to preach to the world, but they want to, they're losing their family. It starts with your family. Are we going to go out and feed everybody? We got people in our own church hungry. That is not God. It starts with family. And it starts with us changing our mind transforming our mind to a community mindset. Amen? Amen. Y'all get anything out of the word today? Let me read this one last scripture and we're going to be done. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. This will tie it all up for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Hallelujah. God is good, man. God loves us. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26, he says this. For you, watch this, for you see your calling, brethren, how that many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. God's called us out of the dark into his marvelous light. He says in the Amplified, verse 26, for simply consider your own call. What was I just talking about? What we've been called to do. Right? Simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates. See? Talking about the kingdom. 
and standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you were powerful. Not many of you were high or noble at birth. See, for, so for some of you that feel less than, and you bought into this United States of America equality trip, you don't need America to make you equal. You don't need America to make things right. God's already made things right. Watch, watch what he says right here. Verse 27. No, for God selected, deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what in the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. Verse 28. And God selected, deliberately chose what in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded it and treated it with contentment, even the things that, that are nothing, that he might dispose and bring to nothing the things that are, so that no mortal man shall have a pretense for glory and boast in the presence of God. But it is of from him, capital H, that you have your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom from God, reveal to us knowledge to the, to the divine plan of salvation previously hidden from the manifestation of itself as our righteousness, thus marking us upright and putting us in right standing with God. Watch this. Remember what I said earlier. And our consecration, making us pure and holy. See, you become pure and holy because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. You become wise because of the blood of Jesus. You become prosperous because of the blood of Jesus. You become rich because of the blood of Jesus. You don't become these things because of your effort. He says, in our redemption, providing our ransom for eternal penalty for sin. He says, verse 31. So then as it is written, let him who boasts and proudly rejoice and glories, boast and proudly rejoice and glory in the Lord. Amen. Do you see that? God wants everything that we do to be lined up with the way he thinks, the way king of the We must come, bring ourselves to the point where we submit into the way God says it does in the way how God says we're to think. Amen? Y'all get anything out of the word today? Give God some praise. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for each person at the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord. Uh, Father, just for their desire, uh, for their heart, uh, Lord, to, to want to know you, to want to have a kingdom mindset. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of them, Father. I thank you, Lord, that this word goes forth and takes deep root in their hearts. And Father, I stand waiting, watching, and expecting it to perform what we've sent it forth to perform in. I thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name.